So here is my first ever fabric junk journal that I've created. I made a lot of mistakes, uh, but if you want to see how I created this, please stay tuned. I've made several videos on it. And like I said, I've made several mistakes while making this journal, and you can see in the video how I try to fix and correct these mistakes. I will most likely be working in this for the month of July for my one book July challenge. Uh, initially, completing this journal was my one book July challenge, but I've already completed it, so I thought, I think maybe I will just kind of work in it and uh, try and film some journal with me videos and I will post those up when I can. And really quick, Johanna, I'm so sorry I mis you mispronounced your name in the video. Hi, it's Mitz from My Life. Mitz, thank you so much for stopping by. I wanted to create this fabric junk journal and I've been hugely inspired by Johanna and Tiffy Butter on YouTube. They shared their fabric journals and I wanted to try and see if I can create one. And because I get a lot of requests to share my process of how I create these journals, I thought I would, you know, put the camera in and show you my mistakes and I thought we would, it would be fun to kind of do it together. I found this fabric uh, from this store called Izawaya in Japan and if anybody is interested this is what it is called. It is called the Munsell Collection, M-U-N-S-E-L-L. -L. It's made in Japan. It's very pretty and it's, it wasn't one of those like scrap bins. So I think this was about 300 yen. I think it's a good chunk of fabric. It's a lot more than I need, so it's really, really pretty. Um, yeah, and I think both Johanna and Tiffany used a like scrap paper as their backing. I, I think Johanna used um, a book cover. Was it a soft book cover? I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, they used. I'm using just some scrap pieces of paper, scrapbook paper. This is like a really thin one. Probably can't tell by hearing the... So this is photo paper and then this is the scrap paper. It's almost like a little bit thicker than copy paper. It's really thin. I'm, I, I have thicker ones but uh, like I have a thicker piece of paper but I was afraid that it wouldn't I wouldn't be able to pierce through if I had like a thick piece of paper. I'm not sure. I might actually change my mind. I'm just worried that it won't pierce through. Okay, so I really don't know where I'm going to begin, but I think it, it'll be fun that we will do this together. My only, I guess, uh, requirement for this journal is that I want one page to be at least this width. So, I guess it's a photo. The size of a photo, this is like 12 and a half centimeters. So it's slightly uh, wider than a traveler's notebook insert. I was debating if I should make it a traveler's notebook size. Uh, I like the I like Johanna's journal where she has the cover wrapping around so that it's expandable. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just trying to think in my head. How do I want to measure this? So it's 12 and a half. Um, 12 and a half, it will go up to 25. This is not enough. So I think I'm going to have to use two separate pieces of paper. Let's see how tall I want to do it. I think I want to keep it as the same height as the Traveler's Notebook. I wonder how tall this one is. This is slightly taller than the Traveler's Notebook. The Traveler's Notebook, I believe, is 21 centimeters. This is 23. Maybe I'll keep it the same size as this one. Just so that if I put it on a bookshelf, it will kind of be consistent. So let's do 23 centimeters in height. <coughs> I'm going to get my cutting board. Thank you for all the comments about uh, the last video. A lot of people mentioned that they like these chattier type of videos. So let's do 23 centimeters. It's a great way to finally use some scrap. 
I I don't know. I like I love scrapbook paper, and I just tend to hoard scrapbook paper because I feel like if I use the paper, then what happens if I really want it for another spread, and then I can't use it, and I end up just hoarding it, which is horrible. So the height is so sorry. It should be this way. So this is 23 centimeters this way, and I want it to be like I said at least. I don't know how much I should add. Maybe I'll just kind of eyeball it and I can always switch it up later. I can always cut it down later. So I'm just going to add, I'm just going to eyeball it and maybe add this much. I might just washi tape it or so I want to have like a spine I don't know how many I don't like it to be too too big so maybe just like two inches or so and I might put in two to three really thin inserts and then it will be like this hmm. I should have cut more of this. <laughs> Probably won't be able to do that many signatures, so that's okay. So, I don't know how many... That's like a uh, three centimeter spine. I could probably make it a little bit thinner. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to washi tape this down for now really quickly just some thicker washi tape now I'll tape both sides I hope the airplane noise isn't too distracting I know every time I film a video there's lots of airplanes flying in the background and I try my best to edit the videos but sometimes it's tough and then you can still hear them but so there's that now comes time to measuring the fabric let's see how do I want to do this I like the idea of having the pockets like Johanna used a pillowcase, I think it was, and she just uh, folded the pocket part and then used this as a pocket and she sewed the edges. So let's see, this is a really big piece, kind of like this fuzzy edging, so maybe I'll use that. I seriously need a bigger desk. My desk is tiny. <laughs> Excuse me. So I think I will do something like this. I kind of, oh, maybe I'll use this edge here so that it doesn't get cut up. You can see here, made in Japan, and then it has the collection of the fabric. So I think I'll cut it uh, just, I don't know how I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to sew this or if I should just cut it right on the edge and then just glue it on top. I think I might sew it just to have a finished look, but I kind of like the not non-finished look too. So. Please don't cringe. I don't. I'm not like a professional or anything. I don't know how people measure their fabrics, but I'm using a pencil just to mark a line so that I can cut it. And these are not like fabric scissors. These are the same scissors I use for my crafting. 
obviously they're not really sharp, but it's doing the job. There's a lot of fabric left I can use for future projects. Here it is again. Why do I feel like it is lopsided? 23 centimeters. 23 centimeters. Is it the fabric? I feel that it's lopsided. I think that's okay for a pocket. That's a good. Uh, I wonder if I can just staple it. <clears throat> I can always take it out later. Oh, they went through. This stapler is actually was part of a kit from Daiso. And maybe I'll put like an eyelet here. And I think I might just cut this part here and then fold it over again. Johanna was saying um, when she put in her signatures, the fabric was is, was quite sturdy and it stayed in place. So maybe I'll do that. <clears throat> I can barely see these staples. So I guess if you don't have a sewing machine, you could still definitely do this. I felt like um, when I was getting into like junk journaling and I saw the really pretty uh, sewed you know, all the journals that were sewed. I have a sewing machine and I was <clears throat> reluctant to take it out and I finally did and I'm really glad that I did but I still want to encourage people that don't have a sewing machine that you could still participate. I'm using, you can see here I'm just using a small little stapler to staple this and I think it works because um, the paper, the scrap paper is really thin. You can always cover it cover the staples up with like lace but you can't really see it there if you cover it with lace it's, you know you can totally you won't even, you won't be able to see it um, but yeah you might put like an eyelet there just like Johanna did and if you put an eyelet there you can pass it through and on here is what I don't know how I want to... I guess I'll just fold it over for now. I should have taken... Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to fold that over. Let me just fold this over for now. <clears throat> So one thing I learned is if you're going to fold this over, just do one staple. Fold this over and fold this over so that you just use one staple, you're not double stapling it. Making a... not a mess, but <laughs> it'll just look prettier if it's just one staple. But See, now there's two staples you can see there. But anyways, that's okay. Maybe I'll put another one here or... Let's try some double-sided tape, see if that works. This is so, uh, how do I say? I don't know, I, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but it's kind of fun to see. <laughs> like, I'm totally winging this. I, I haven't really looked at YouTube to see if there's any tutorials. 
Oh, that's, that's actually nice. It's quite nice. It might probably come off with a lot of use, but... And this also, again, is from Daiso, this double-sided tape. So... Yeah, like I said, I'm just totally winging this, and I think it's just fun to see what will come out of this project. I was just watching Romani's uh, One Book July challenge for this year, and I might maybe put this down on my list as my Go Big or Go Home project. It looks like that. It's really flimsy, which I don't mind at all. I don't want it to be like a really thick cover. I want it to be able to wrap around. I don't like the fact that I can hear the paper though, but I guess, it's, you know. Oh well. So there's my cover. I might break this up into several videos. So there's my cover. You just use staples. No sewing. You can use double-sided tape. It holds it quite nicely. I suppose it also depends on the type of fabric you have. It's, yeah, it's not really going anywhere as of yet. Um, the signatures... I guess my next video will be putting... Oh, I should put an eyelet there. Let's see how that goes. Actually, I'm going to think about the closure. I'm not going to do the eyelet yet. But yeah, I folded the fabric piece up. Once I put in the signatures, hopefully I'll be able to punch the holes through. Uh, it's, I don't think it's really that thick, so it should be okay. I just don't know how this fabric is going to react. I probably have to use a really sharp needle. Uh, so I guess the next video will be putting together the signatures. And like I said, I want the signatures to be thin. Like I don't want it to be too bulky, so I might just do two to three thin notebooks. And... Yeah, let me show you. I think that's it for now. I was thinking of maybe embellishing it with some lace, but I don't want it to be too flowery or too frilly. <laughs> so I think for now I'll leave it. Um, I will always, you know, if I change my mind or if I feel up to it, then I'll do it. I don't want to force myself. Like if I don't feel like doing it, then I don't want to do it. Um, I'm just that type of person, I guess. If I don't feel it, or I don't feel like it's going to work, then I'm not going to force myself to do it. So, really simple, super easy, super amateur uh, fabric notebook cover. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and share. Um, stay tuned so that you'll see the next video where I will do the signatures and putting the papers together and making the signatures. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.